Uh, good morning. Uh, I am Sara Garavelli, and I would like to welcome you all to the first day of the EOSCAB week on behalf of the EOSCAB uh, Consortium. Uh, thank you very much to all the people who registered for this uh, online event. So we have more than 600 participants uh, registered to this event, so we are really happy about these numbers especially considering the situation that we are currently living. And um, in this uh, uh, COVID situation, we have all seen our, a big acceleration of the digital transformation. And I think that today we are also experiencing in the EOS community this uh, digital transformation as well. So it's the first time that we run such a large uh, meeting online. So please bear with us in case of any technical glitches during the day. So we have a full team supporting, so we will try to uh, fix everything on time. Uh, before uh, leaving the floor to the first speaker of today, I would like to remind you some housekeepings. Um, the event is fully recorded and the recordings will be available uh, on uh, the EOSCAB website together with all the presentations uh, right after the meeting. And on the slides, you can see the link to the agenda page. That's the link where we'll be publishing all the slides. By the way, all the participants will also receive an email after today's uh, event with all the links. Uh, I clearly remind you to please do not activate your microphone or videos unless the host gives you the permission. If you don't see the buttons at the bottom of the Zoom window, move the mouse on that window and the buttons will appear. And if, if you have any issues with the audio, try to switch off your video. This might help with the connection. Uh, after the first plenary, we are going to split the audience in different breakout sessions according to the agenda. If you want to change the session, uh, in which you are in, you just need to use uh, the leave breakout room buttons at the bottom of the Zoom window. You will go back to the main room and in the main room in the, among the participants, you will find uh, the Zoom host. You just need to send a private message to the host asking to be moved to the session that you wish to attend. Finally, so especially this first day is a very interactive day. So what are the options to interact with the speakers and the chairs of the sessions? If you want to speak during the meeting, you just need to use the raise your hand button of Zoom. You can find the button in the participants panel. Please remember to lower your hand once your intervention is over. This will facilitate the life of the chairs. Um, another way is to use the Zoom chat, as you are all uh, you are doing. Uh, and another way, almost all the sessions have a Slido, are using Slido as an interactive tool. You just need to go to Slido and enter the code EOSCAB week. Uh, please select the correct Slido room based on the session that you want to attend. You will see the full list of the rooms uh, corresponding to the sessions in Slido. For the plenaries, uh, you need to select uh, the first uh, uh, room on the top of the Slido panel, which is called 18 May EOS Consultation Q&A. In particular, we will be using this room for the closing plenary that will be fully dedicated to gather your questions for uh, the chairs. I've seen that there is a question in the chat asking if you will be automatically transferred to the breakout. The answer is yes. So once the plenary is over, you will go automatically in the breakout rooms that you have selected. Okay? Good. So these close my uh, housekeeping. And so I'm pleased now to introduce our first speaker of the day, Kathleen Stover. Uh, Catherine is from Geant, the Pan-European Data Network for Research and Education Community, and she is co-chair of the EOSC Executive Board. Uh, say that, I'll, close, I'll switch off my video and I leave the room to Catherine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sarah. Good morning into the world. 
Normally we would be sitting in Karlsruhe this morning, a lovely city, I'm sure with very nice weather as well this morning. But um, thinking yesterday evening that I should be on my way to Karlsruhe, I'm actually quite happy that uh, at least we have the opportunity today uh, instead um, to be coming into your homes. So um, I'm very happy that you've decided this morning to allow the EOS consultation day into your homes and houses. So again, welcome to you all. Next slide, please. So this uh, consultation day is organized for you by the EOS governance structure as it's been existing since the 1st of January, 2019. So the consultation day is organized between the EOSC executive board, the EOSC secretariat, and all components are also, of course, um, already discussed and in the context of being discussed by the EOSC governing board. So we will be showing you today the outputs really that uh, we have produced in the EOSC working groups over the last 12 months. And I have to say it's really just 12 months, even though it feels a lot longer because most of the working groups only really started last year around this time. So we are hoping today to have a very interactive, uh, um, inter well, interactive conversations and dialogues with you today as stakeholders. Next slide, please. So as we're not sitting on the stage this morning in the plenary, um, I thought I'd just remind you who the executive board actually is. So here's a few pictures of us. And um, so you can see the composition of the executive board. We have a few new members, um, but also I would like to um, point out to you that originally when we started working last year in the EOSC executive board, we had two documents that we thought we were going to be following. The EOSC strategic implementation plan, not to be confused with the EOS strategic research and innovation agenda, which we will be discussing today, and the EOS work plan. Of those, the EOS work plan is at the moment being um, updated. Um, but let's talk a little bit about what we will be talking about today. Next slide, please. So the working groups are behind all of the consultation sessions that uh, we will be having today. Um, you can see here the, um, the main working groups. We have five main working groups, the landscape working group, sustainability, the rules of participation, the architecture working group, the fair working group, and the skills and, uh, skills and training working group. You will be hearing from these working groups, and in some of the cases, you will hear from the task forces within these working groups. Um, next slide. And we are, as I said, 17 months into the two year of the EOS governance. And we are now focusing on the activities that actually 12 months ago, we didn't really know we would be focusing on. A large uh, amount of our time has completely been dedicated to the EOS partnership proposal, which uh, brings the EOS governance towards a co-program partnership under Horizon Europe. We also are very much focused on establishing the EOS legal entity, and we need to be doing that before the end of this year, when the mandate of the current executive and governing board comes to an end. We will be speaking a lot today about the strategic research and innovation agenda for this EOS partnership. And of course, there's also the work plan for 2020, which encompasses all of our work in the working groups, which is a document which we are updating today and we will be making available to you very soon. Next slide. The next two slides, this one and the next, um, really are giving you an overview of the basic underlying assumptions that we have in the partnership proposal. In this current document, um, we are summarizing the vision of the EOSC in the sense that uh, we're looking at uh, the EOSC as a multi-stakeholder European partnership. And we have defined, been defining together with the European Commission and the governance board the vision that we have, which is that the EOSC is an, will enable interdisciplinary research across uh, to address societal challenges. It will be a vehicle for open science and the digital single market. 
it will offer researchers anywhere in the European Union the resources that they need to do their work. It will stimulate the emergence of a competitive European cloud sector. It will give Europe a global lead in research data management. It will develop an internet of fair digital objects, including publications and software. And it will reduce the fragmentation by federating existing research infrastructures. This is the vision that we have for the EOSC and which is laid down in the partnership proposal. And if you look at the next slide, again, uh, one of the summary slides coming directly out of the um, EOS partnership proposal, we've been working on an objective tree for, for the EOS. And uh, for those of you in the audience that are familiar with this uh, particular slide, uh, this is the version 10, which uh, I believe is maybe not quite the final version, but almost. But here you can see that uh, in order to really structure our thinking, in the partnership proposal and towards a sustainable EOS governance for the future in this partnership uh, under Horizon Europe. We've been defining the current problems and barriers, and then we've been looking at objectives and benefits. Um, I won't go into the detail of this because a lot of this will come out particularly in the session that we have on the strategic research and innovation agenda. Next slide, please. So we have today the nine sessions that are going to give you a full update on the work of the EOSC Executive Board, the Governance Board, and the six working groups and their task forces over the last 12 months. As I said, an emphasis will be given on the EOS Strategic Research and Innovation Agenda, which is the agenda underlying the partnership and will be the focus of the work in the partnership over the next seven years. We will look at the governance, the maintenance and sustainability of metrics and, and PITs. We will look at the EOSC rules of participation. We will look at sustainability and governments of EOSC post uh, the current governance scheme. There will be a session on the EOSC authentication and authorization infrastructure. We'll look at EOSC at practical level in the sense of skills. There will be a landscaping report from the landscape working group. We will look at the PIT policy and implementation, and also we will be addressing the content of the minimal valuable EOSC as defined in the partnership proposal. We get a lot of questions, next slide please, on how we interact and how you can interact more with us. And uh, this slide is really here to ensure that you catch up with all of the ongoing consultations that are out there at this point in time, particularly on the interoperability framework, the PIT policy in the version two, and the FAIR metrics and certification papers. All the links are here, but I would also like to stress that the best way of communicating with us is via the EOSC liaison platform, and I'm giving you the link here from the EOS Secretariat website as well. And the next slide. As Sarah has been saying, um, any questions um, that um, will not be answered during the day, we will be ready to take in the closing plenary. And with that, um, I wish you a very um, interactive and communicative day today and look forward to hearing your comments on all the work that we've been carrying out. Thank you. <laughs>